that for me please. We're going back to where we were last week. Sometimes the only way you can go forward is to take a few steps back. So we're reading from the tenth canto Shimad Bhagavatam, can't chapter fifty six Text number one. Text number one. 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 Um, she was very well contented in a kinetic, but then how to be fed a paper of extra verses we call us. She shukuvacha sutrajita sutanayam krishnaya krita kilvisa shamantakena Hare Krishna. Hey. Um, Shukadeva Goswami said, having offended Lord Krishna, Satrajit tried as best he could to atone by presenting him with his daughter and the Shamantaka jewel. Shukadeva Goswami azt mondta, miután megsérdette az Úr Krishnát, Satrajit a követelhető legjobban próbált vezetelni azzal, hogy odaadta neki a lányát, és a sámat a fejlőttel. So I'm just going to read a little something from Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's Saartha Darshini commentary on this verse. Egy kicsit Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's Saartha Darshini magyarázatából ehhez a verset tűzött magyarázatából fogok olvasni. He kind of gives a summary study of the chapter, very briefly. He says that in this chapter, Satrajit is murdered. Krishna kills Satadanva. 
and receives the Shamantaka jewel from Akura. Since the jewel was the cause of Setrajit's death, one learns that the object which ordinarily protects one can also kill him if one offends Krishna. Ez azt mutatja, hogy az a tár, amely általánosságban véve, meg, általánosságban véve megvédeni az embert, az meg is ölheti akár, ha, ez a, ha valaki megsérti az Úr Krisnát. Koragraganya gana gotra goloru haram, goranga gura tama gopyada kolpa briksham. Kopala gada rati dam, yeti singh hagora go vinda deshi kavaram satatam namami. So, this is our 123rd session in a series we're calling Meeting in Kurukshetra. And it's our desire to try to understand something about this most essential mystery in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mataji, question for you. Who does Krishna love more? The residents of Vrindavan or the residents of Dwarka? What would you say? She would say it's the residence of Vindavan, but also the residence of Varka when they are actually the residence of Vindavan in different form. Okay. She's given a very high-tech, tricky answer. Hare Krishna devotees are famous for that. <laughs> so, generally, we, we will say that it's a residence of Vrindavan. But if that's true, then why did Krishna leave them? It's a question that no one ever asked before the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we've been discussing this from the basis of the literatures given by our six Goswamis. There are commentaries on the Bhagavatam. And especially from uh, Srila Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, Srila Sanatana Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatamrita, and Srila Rupa Goswami's Lalita Madhav. And we spoke something, I'm looking back a little bit, just kind of because we weren't here last week. And there's a lot of so many details and things to try to move forward with. I'm hoping we can move forward a little bit in this session, but mostly it's going to be a little bit of a review. <laughs> so we discussed how uh, implicitly, indirectly, our Goswamis have shown that the purpose, real purpose of the Dwar Mathura and Dwarka Leela is um, to enhance the feelings of the residents of Vrindavan. And therefore, in that sense, everything is connected to Vrindavan and everything is seen through the lens of Vrindavan. 
és ebben az értelemben minden kapcsolódik Vindávanhoz, és mindent a Vindávani szemszögből, Vindávani lencsén keresztül. And in Gopal Champu, we learn that the two sons of, uh, of, of uh, the, the god of wealth, Kuvera, Mani Griva and uh, Nala Kuvera, who became trees. And they were in Vrindavan for a long time watching things. After Krishna relieved them from the form of trees, they became known as Snigdakanta and Madhukanta. They got new jobs in Govinda's restaurant. And what they were doing was every day they would discuss with the bridge bosses what's going on with Krishna. There were messengers coming back from Mutter and Dwarka and they were getting news every day. When Krishna left Vrindavan, according to Srila Rupa Goswami, the gopis became completely distraught. And unable to live without Krishna, Srimati Radharani entered into the Jamuna and killed herself, drowned herself. The 16,000 gopis who had performed Katyayani Brata were kidnapped by Banasura. And uh, Chandrabali, who Rupa Goswami says is actually Srimati Radharani's cousin's sister, older sister. Was taken by Rukmi to his father Maharaj Bishmaka. And she became known as the daughter of Maharaj Bishmaka Rukmini. So there's this drama going on in Vrindavan. And they're every day they're wanting to hear what's going on with Krishna. And one day they come and they explain about the marriage of Krishna to Rukmini. And Jiva Goswami in his Lagu Vaishnavtoshini commentary in the Bhagavatam, he says, how is it if Krishna really loves Radharani? Now, why is he getting married to this Rukmini? And we spoke about the marriage of Krishna and Rukmini. And how Krishna actually understood this is Chandravali. And Krishna thought all the gopis are gone, only Chandravali is left. What is and what is the single most special quality about Chandravali? She reminds Krishna of Radharani. So much so that sometimes in Vrindavan, when Badra or Shama, some of the, the assistants of Chandravali, when they bring Krishna to Chandravali's kunj, 
hogy amikor Badra vagy Sáma időnként elhozza a Krishnát Csandrával, egy kundrával, Krishna stays and he doesn't go to see Radharani. Akkor Krishna csak ott marad és nem is megy Radharani. Jennifer, is that nice? It's very bad. Huh? Huh? But why does he do that? Because when he goes and sees Chandravali, he thinks of Radharani and he becomes so ecstatic thinking of Radharani, he becomes stunned and he can't go anywhere. Everything is really all about Srimati Radharani. And so then we heard that, that when Krishna saw this, this uh, princess Rukmini, and how she was about to commit suicide jumping into the fire yagya, Krishna, Krishna, wait, it's Rukmini, it's, it's Chandravali. And Krishna went and grabbed her arm. Now, Chandravali Rukmini, she also thought that Krishna was gone. She wrote him a letter, please come and rescue me. But Krishna never showed up. Better I die. Uh -huh. So she told her assistant Madhavi. Please take care of that uh, Kadamba tree that I planted from the seed from Vrindavan. And she jump, went to jump in the fire. Suddenly someone grabbed her by the arm. Rukmini, she thought it was Madhavi. Madhavi, let go of me! And she grabbed Madhavi's hand. But it felt like a man's hand. And she turned to see Madhavi. And she saw the beautiful face of Krishna. And she fainted in ecstasy. So then Krishna killed all the demon kings and, and, and was with Rukmini. And then Maharaj Bhishmaka came and told Krishna, this is your lucky day. You can marry my beautiful daughter. And Maharaj Bhishmaka said, there's just one little small condition. Don't mind us, it's a family request. You can marry our daughter, but you have to make a promise, Ishvan. You won't marry any other girls. De Isten, meg kell ígérnem, hogy elvehetted a lányunkat, de senki más nem vehetsz el utána. Stabian. <laughs> And Krishna, what kind of situation is that for him? És Krishna, hát ez milyen helyzet? He's Gopi Janavallabha. Uh -huh. He's Mud and Mohan. All the ladies run after him like anything. And now he's taking a vow, I won't marry anyone except this one girl. I won't marry anyone except for Chandravali. We can't even think about it, my God. But Krishna thought to himself that well, Radharani's gone. But Chandravali reminds me of Radharani. So, again, he agreed. 
Baba. This is the description of our Goswamis. And we discussed something in connection then with the Shaman Taka Jewel in our last session. About uh, the source of that jewel. Uh-huh. And how Rupa Goswami says in Alita Madhav that there was a demon who was a servant of Kuvera, the god of wealth. And Kuvera, the Kuvera, the god of wealth, had this amazing jewel. Which would produce gold. And that demon, Shankachuda, who's a yaksha, he stole that jewel from his boss. He was he had a good buddy in uh, Mathura. His name was Kongsa. And Kongsa had gotten some secret message from someone that there were some excuse my American language, there were some hot babes in Brindavan. Whose names were Radharani and uh, Chandravali. So Kangsa wanted to have those girls for himself. So he sent Shankachuda to kidnap Radharani. And this takes place in Lita Madhav, obviously before Radharani's suicide. This is the second act. Radharani's suicide is in the fourth act. And Shankachuda entered into Brindavan with that jewel on his head. It's a little symbolic in some ways for us too. We want to enter Brindavan. We'd like to enter New Brajadam and become a resident. But how are you going to get in there? So sometimes we think that, oh, I'll dress myself up very nicely like a very elevated devotee. And I'll make a big presentation to everybody so they know how important I am. And they'll let me enter Brindavan. I'll be able to move to New Brajadam. So this is Shankachuda. He's a demon. His real motivation is money and wealth and women. But he puts this jewel on his head. A very powerful jewel which protects him and gives him life and gives him wealth. And he looks, he looked so effulgent. People couldn't see, they thought, wow, it's Surya Dev. And we hear that even Brenda Devi, huh, she thought that it was the sun god entering into Brindavan. Very interesting. And we spoke in some of our previous sessions about different demons like Vatsasura, Palambasura, and Shankachuda, and Putana, who look like devotees. 
alkalommal beszéltünk Batászúráról, Kalambászúráról, Putanáról, akik úgy néztek ki, mint hogyha bakták lennének. And how the residents of Brindavan were so simple, they thought, yeah, this is a great devotee. És ahol, hogy Brindavan lakosai annyira egyszerűek, hogy azt gondolták, hogy ez egy nagy bakta. But it was really a demon. So it seems like they were able to enter Brindavan and become a bridge bossy. Seems like it was an easy thing to get a job at Govinda's restaurant. I fooled Gosteshwari. She thought I was a, a saintly person. You may fool so many of the residents of Brindavan. But you can't fool Krishna. So this is Brindavan management. They're not trying to judge everybody. They're simple. You want to come and be in Brindavan, you're welcome. And their management system is that Krishna will decide. And Krishna recognized Putana, Krishna recognized Vatsasura, Palambasura, and Shankachuda. And Krishna solved the problem. That's the management of my god brother Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu and Gadai Giri. He's been the temple president there for, oh gosh, almost three decades now. And he's so simple, they have people from all over the world who go there and stay. And he just lets anybody come and stay. Sometimes they're troublemakers. Sometimes they're crazy. You'll see him talking to the picture on the wall, something. And the devotees will go to Chaitanya Chandra and say, you got to get rid of this guy, he's like this and that. And Chaitanya Chandrabhu always says, Gopal is in charge. The deity is Shishi Radha Gopal. Gopal is in charge of things. He'll take care. And inevitably, either that devotee's mood changes, or, or something happens and they get some intelligence to leave. That's the Brindavan school of management. Sometimes it's not always so neat and, and antiseptic but it and causes a little anxiety, but it always works. <coughs> so, in our previous session, we heard from Lilita Madhav how this Shankachuda came into Brindavan and he grabbed Srimati Radharani by the hair. And started dragging her away. It doesn't get any worse than that. And Rupa Goswami described Krishna's reaction. Can you imagine what did Krishna think about that? All the gopis started crying, Krishna, Krishna, help, help. And he comes and sees this demon has come to Vrindavan. He's grabbed my Srimati Radharani by her hair and is dragging her away. And 
So Rupa Goswami has described what Krishna said at that time to Shankachuda. It's one of the most awesome statements of, of uh, what's the word I'm trying to find, uh, of Vira, uh, of Shivari. Krishna told him. Huh? He said, hey, offender to Radha. Shankachuda. I feel great pain in my heart. The pain is there because I won't be able to spend all of eternity torturing you. Uh -huh. He said, you should know the wicked black night of death is now chasing you. How will I torture you forever if you simply die? And then Rupa Goswami says that Krishna hit Ta Shankachuda one million times, give or take a few. He beat the hell out of him. And then he took that jewel off his head. And he turned around, he was going to give that jewel to Srimati Radharani. And who's there? Oh, Balaram, you just showed up. See, Krishna becomes very shy around Balaram. In his connection, in his relationship with Radharani. So at that time, Krishna gave Balaram that jewel. Now Balaram, he knows Krishna's desire. So kind of behind his back, Balaram gave the jewel to Shimati Radharani. When Shankachuda died, huh? Purnamasi, she said, today there's going to be a big festival, a big feast for all the starving jackals of Vrindavan. <laughs> so anyway, now we're going back to Dwarka. And in Dwarka, Rupa Goswami describes there was a conversation between Uddhava and Narad Muni. Right. We spoke so much about Uva, some of you were present in those katas. How Uddhava is a resident of Mathura. But he was sent by Krishna to Vrindavan to attend the, the uh, Vrindavan University of Prema. And the principal of that school is Shimati Radharani. And Uddhava studied under Radharani. What is Prema? Then we heard how Uddhava went back to Mathura and he talked to Krishna and said, Krishna, what are you doing? 
akkor Udava visszament Maturába, és mondta, hogy Krishna, mit csinálsz? And how right after Uddhava speaks all these things to Krishna about Radharani and her feelings, Krishna starts crying. And then what's the first thing he does? He goes to visit another woman mm-hmm. whose name is Kubja. And that's a whole other discussion. So Uddhava is watching all these things, and Uddhava has heard that, that Radharani's committed suicide, uh, and the older sister Chandravali, now she's married Krishna, Krishna's promised, I'm not going to marry anyone else. És Uddhava hallja mindezeket a dolgokat, hogy most Radharani öngyilkos lett, Radharani unokanővére, and so then one day in Dwarka, Uddhava is speaking with Narad Muni, all these terrible things have happened. And Uddhava is feeling very sad. And Narad Muni mentions something about how the younger sister of Chandravali how she's doing so well. And Uddhava says, Satyam eva kim ayumasmati kanishta devi. Is it true? The younger sister is still alive? Azt választolja, hogy ez igaz? A, a, a huga még mindig életem van? And Narad Muni says, Ayush matati kem uccite. Alive? What are you saying? Életben van? Mi, miről beszélsz? So dvara tim eva lankur vati vartate. Right now, she's living here in the city of Dwarka. Most ebben a pillanatban is itt élt Várat a városában. Udova's hair is stood on end. És Udovának ettől uh, égnek mereket. He said, katam iyam atragata, atragata. Uh, how did she get here? Hogy került ide? Uh, now we're speaking about the Shamantaka jewel in Satrajit. És akkor most beszélünk. Uh, and Narad Muni then he tells Uddhava that the Satrajit he had no child. He started worshipping Surya Dev mm-hmm. to get wealth. And because and to, to get two things, wealth and he wanted to have the best child. Két dolgot akart tőle, gazdagságot és a legjobb gyermeket. Now we heard before, it's all a little complicated, so we're going so slow. Kicsit bonyolult az egész értelme ezt, úgyhogy kicsit lassan megyünk. We heard before that when Radharani committed suicide, she drowned herself in the Jamuna. Hallottuk korábban, hogy amikor Radharani öngyilkos lett, meg belefullasztottam alá a Jamunába. Who is the father of Jamuna Devi? Ki Jamuna Devi? Apja. Is it father or brother? I forget. I forget if it's the father or the brother. But the father or the brother, one of which, one of the two, of Jamuna is Surya Dave. Surya yes, father. Father. She uh, took Radharani and gave Radharani to Surya Dave. And in our previous sessions, we also commented based on that painting in New Brajadam. We see the gopis worshipping Surya Dev. Every day, every day Radharani worships the sun god. So when uh, Jamuna brought uh, Radharani to Surya Dev, her father, Radharani saw because she didn't really can't really commit suicide. 
ráleválni, aki ugye nyilván nem tud igazából öngyilkos lenni. It's just a drama. Ez csak egy dráma. Radharani said, oh, this is my worshipful deity. Sure you did. Radharani látta, hogy hát ez az imádandó istenség. I have to make an offering. Kell, hogy valamilyen felajánlást tegyek neki. But I, I don't have anything. De semmi nincs nálam. And then she remembered. Balaram gave me that jewel from the head of Shankachuda. So she gave that jewel to Surya Dev like it was a flower. So now Narad Muni is telling Uddhava all this. And Narad Muni says that when Satrajit worshipped Surya Dev, wanting undying wealth and the best child, unlimited wealth, Surya Dev gave him two gifts. The Shankachuda jewel from the head of Shankachuda. And Shimati Radharani. And when Radharani was taken then by Satrajit, she got a new name. She became known as Satyabhama. És ettől kezdve Szatyabámának hívták. So this is what we're coming in now in the Bhagavatam. Ide jutunk most el a Bhagavatamban. And this 56th chapter of the 10th canto describes this whole uh, pastime which seems like it's full of politics and mundane uh, diplomacy, ez intrigue. Ez az 56-os fejezet, uh, ami úgy tűnik, hogy tele van politikával, uh, világi, and how Satrajit is criticizing Krishna, and uh, how they at first is described in this 56th chapter that some of the residents of Dwarka, when Satrajit came, they thought it was the sun god who showed up. Um, először le, leírja ez az 56. fejezet azt, hogy uh, amikor Dwarkaba belépett Satrajit, akkor because he was so effulgent, because he had that jewel, he was keeping it around his neck, you know? like Mataji has a jewel on, on her neck page. <laughs> not the shaman talk of it. And as long as Akura was, as, as long as uh, Satrajit was there with that jewel, uh, there was good weather. És amíg ott volt Szathajit ezzel az égkővel, addig jó volt az időjárás. Good weather means the sun comes out every day. A jó időjárás az azt jelenti, hogy minden nap kisüt a nap. And every night it rains. És minden éjszaka esik az eső. That's perfect weather. Ez a tökéletes időjárás. And Satyajit was taking that, that stone and he was creating so much gold, he was getting like un unlimited amounts of gold. And Akura wanted that uh, uh, that jewel should be given to Krishna. But Satrajit was very, very attached to it. So previously, Surya Dev, when he gave that girl Radharani to Satrajit, he told her, told him that, following instruction of Narad Muni, you should give this beautiful girl in marriage to the most exalted husband. Satrajit, when he gave to Radharani, Surya Dev, when he gave to Radharani Satrajit, then he told her that this beautiful girl. A legképzettebb fénynek kell majd adnod. So when uh, Uddhava heard all these things, he was so ecstatic and so happy. Amikor Uddhava mindezt meghalotta, akkor teljesen extázisba került, nagyon boldog volt. So here now we, we've got Dwarka Lila, and Radharani and uh, Chandrabali are there as Satyabhama and Rukmini. Akkor itt van a Dwarka Lila, 
de ott van Rádaváni és Csandrávali, mint Szatya Báma és Csandrávali és Rukmini. And, uh, but Krishna has taken a vow that I'll only marry Rukmini. And Surya Dev, he told Radharani, you don't reveal your identity to anyone huh, until Krishna ties this jewel back on your wrist. So then the mother of Satrajit uh, told her son, you should give this girl, Satyabhama, to Krishna to be his wife. Not knowing that actually Krishna had taken this promise, made this promise, I won't marry anyone except for Rukmini. So Satyajit's mother brought this most beautiful Satyabhama to Krishna's palace. Rukmini came to the door to greet them. She said, oh, I'm sorry. My husband's not here right now. Maybe I can help you. And Rukmini immediately, she didn't recognize Radharani. But she looked at her and she thought, this is big trouble. My husband likes beautiful women. And this woman is the most beautiful woman in all the three worlds. What am I going to do? So, ladies, sometimes they act very sweet on the outside, but on the inside, <laughs> The third canto of the Bhagavatam says, Sharat Pamoksavam Vaktram Vachascha Shavanam Ritam Hridaya Sturadarabam Strinam Koveda Chastitam That a woman's face, a young girl's face, is as beautiful as a blossoming lotus in autumn. And her words are, are as sweet as Shavanamritam. They're just like nectar. But we die still a darabam, strinam koveda chasitam. Her heart is like a razor edge. So Rukmini is speaking very sweet to Chandra, to uh, Satyabhama. Oh, so nice you're here. Oh, I, my husband will be very happy. He's not here right now. And then Chandravali Rukmini notices that this beautiful girl, Satyabhama, looks disturbed. She asks her, she says, we're both girls. Tell me the truth. I, I see something's bothering you. What is it? You can speak honestly to me. And such a bomber says, oh, thank you. I, I, need to, to, I need to confide in someone. See, the problem is, they want me to marry this guy, your husband, named Dwarkadish. But the problem is, I'm already in love with someone else. He's a coward boy from Vrindavan. And I don't want to marry anyone else. 
és nem akarok senki máshoz hozzá menni. And Chandravali Rukmini says, oh, I understand. Chandravali Rukmini pedig mondja, hogy hát igen, ezt megértem. You poor thing, you. Let me help you. Ó, te szegény, majd megpróbálok segíteni. I'll make some arrangement so that you don't even have to, to see the face of any other men. Megteszek majd valami elrendezés, hogy még látnod se kelljen semmi más, más férfit. And Radharani Sachibama said, oh, you're so kind, thank you. Ó, milyen kedves, köszönöm szépen. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is all a very involved story. Nagyon bonyolult történet. The wife of Surya Dev uh-huh, is known as Sangya. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sangya was a daughter uh, of the very powerful architect whose name is Vishvakarma. Sangya a nagyon nagy hatalommal rendelkező építésznek Vishvakarmának volt a lánya. So uh, understanding Krishna's desire in Dwarka and how Krishna was missing Vrindavan like anything. Megértve Krishna helyzetét uh, várakában, és azt, hogy mennyire Krishna vágyát, és azt, hogy mennyire hiányzik nekik mindában. She requested Vishvakarma that you make a Gupta Brindavan, another Brindavan garden in Dwarka. Szangya megkérte Vishvakarmát, hogy uh, építsen egy másik Brindavan át, egy, egy újabb Brindavan át itt várakában. And Vishvakarma did that. És Vishvakarma ezt meg is tette. Now this is a very important topic. Ez egy nagyon fontos téma. We find a description about this Navabrindavan garden in Dwarka in many of our Goswami literatures. Erről a Dvarakai Navabrindavan kertről nagyon sok leírást találunk a Goswamiaink. Raghunath Das Goswami speaks about it in his book Mukta Charit. Rupa Goswami mentions it in his book Ujjal Nilamani several times. And he elaborately discusses it in his book Lalita Madhav. It's also discussed pretty elaborately by Sanatana Goswami in his book Brihad Bhagavatamrita. És Sanatana Goszámi a Brihad Bhagavatami tájában szintén elég részletesen beszél erről. And by Jiva Goswami in his book Gopal Champu. És Jiva Goszámi Gopal Champu-jában is ott van. So, these are, we're trying to, to inform devotees a little bit about the essence of these very important Gaudiya literatures. Próbálunk valamit átlani a baktáknak a lényegéről, ezeknek a nagyon fontos Gaudiya írásoknak. So, Vishvakarma <coughs> made this Navabrindavan garden in Dwarka for Krishna. Vishvakarma tehát megépítette ezt a Navabrindavan keltet Bárakában Krishnának. And there he made a Govardhan hill, a Brindavan forest, a Jamuna river. <coughs> és ott volt a Govardhan hegy, a Brindavan, Brindavan erdeje és a Jamuna folyó. And he even made a beautiful deity of Krishna. És még uh, Krishna gyönyörű szép múltja is ott áll. So, Rukmini didn't really know everything her husband was doing. Rukmini persze nem tudott mindent, amit az ő félje csinált. Because sometimes husbands are a little um, deceitful with their wives. Mert a féljek néha kicsit... Uh, And every day after breakfast, Krishna would tell Rukmini, "Okay, dear, I got to go to the go to work. I got to kill some demons, save some devotees, got some things to do, speak Bhagavad Gita, things going on." Minden nap Krishna reggeli után azt mondta a feleségének, hogy jó van kedvesem, akkor én most elmegyek dolgozni, meg kell ölnem egy pár démont. Megvédenem a baktákat pár dolgom van. And Krishna then would sneak away, he would leave the palace like, yeah, I'm going to work, and then he would sneak back and go to that Navar Bindavan garden. Krishna elment a palotába, mintha elmenne dolgozni, és utána belopózott ebbe a Navar Bindavan kertbe. And Rukmini, she thought, yeah, my husband, he's out killing demons and saving devotees and doing all that stuff he's supposed to. Pritanai sadhanam vinasaya tadushkritam dharma samstarpanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. 
és akkor a felesége azt gondolta, hogy a felesége, hogy a férjem elment, hát nem dolgozni, ugye csinálja a dolgát, öli a démonokat, védi a baktákat, pavitálja a szádunak, But really, Krishna's going to that never been Davan garden. De valójában Krishna itt a Navadhidában kertben volt. This is such a it, it requires so much foundation to, to understand of these topics. Annyi alapozásra van szükség ahhoz, hogy megértsük ezeket a témákat. So now uh, Radharani's become such a bama. She's brought to the Krishna's Dwarka Palace to become Krishna's wife. Not knowing that this fellow that everybody calls Dwarkadish is actually her, her beloved Nanda Nandan Krishna. She's, she's very depressed. And then Chandravali Rukmini, who's married to Krishna, sees it and says, oh, don't worry. I'm your friend. We'll keep you away from this Dwarkadish fellow and from all other men. And Radharani Satyabhama said, Oh, thank you, you were so kind to me. And she sends her to that Navar Bindavan forest. And what's going to happen there is very, very amazing. És ami ott fog történni, az nagyon csodálatos. I want to look now to Jagannath Puri. És akkor most ránézünk Jagannath Puri-ra. Um, which now I'm looking way, way ahead toward the very end of our katas and how we're going to be tying all these things together. Most teljesen a katánynak a legvégére tekintek már, és arra, hogy hogyan fogjuk ezeket a szállakat mindössze közül a végére. When Rupa Goswami was going to Jagannath Puri, to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He went through Bhubaneswar. And then he came to a small village which was called Satyabhamapur. And when he was there, he had a dream. And Satyabhama came to him. Rupa Goswami had been thinking about writing a, a drama about Braj Lila. And in that place, outside Bhubaneswar, Satyabhama Devi came to him and told him, you should write two dramas. És ezen a helyen Szatya Bámapú uh, megjelent neki, és azt mondta neki, hogy írjon két drámát. And she told him, don't take Krishna out of Brindavan. És azt mondta neki, hogy ne vidd el Krishnát Vindávanából. And then Rupa Goswami woke up. És Rupa Goswami felébre. He continued to Jagannath Puri. Uh, folytatta az útját Jagannath Puriba. And when he arrived in Puri, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, you should write two dramas. Uh -huh. And don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. So then Rupa Goswami wrote Vidagda Madhav and Lita Madhav. He started writing them there when he was staying at Siddhabakul with Haridas Thakur. Now, if you're really a follower of Rupa Goswami, you understand that Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari. And Rupa Manjari is the most intimate maidservant of Srimati Radharani. So if you read this story in Chaitanya Charitamrita about Rupa Goswami stopping in Satyabhamapur 
and the de- and and such a bum of speaking to him. Amikor tehát olvasod ezt a történetet, hogy Rupa Goszámi megállt Szatyabámapurban, és Szatyabámadévi megjelent neki, you may find it confusing. akkor lehet, hogy ez kicsit ilyen összekabar. If Rupa Goszámi is so dedicated to Radharani, then why is someone else coming in his dream? Szatyabáma, one of the Dorka queens. Hogyha... Rupa Manjari, Rupa Goszámi annyira odaadó Simati Rádaráni felé, akkor miért jelenik meg neki egy dvárakai királynő? So, this is the answer. És itt a válasz. That Satyabama is actually Radha. Hogy az a Satyabama valójában Radha. For many years we've been visiting that village of Satyabama Pur. Sok évig látogat, sok éve látogatjuk már ezt a Satyabama Pur falut. The headmaster of that village, his name is Narayan Das, and he's a friend of ours. And in that village they have a very ancient deity of such a Bama Devi. So I spoke to him something about the history of that village. And he told me that the village was named such a Bama Pur before Rupa Goswami ever came there. And uh, that deity of such a Bama Devi was there before Rupa Goswami ever came to that village. So Um, <laughs> how to say all these things? I, I think it's just going to make everybody confused. It's our last session here. So, in Jagannath Puri, Jagannath Puri there's a special garden named Jagannath Vallabha Gardens. And it's there in Jagannath Vallabha Gardens that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to spend a lot of time. It was there in Jagannath Vallabha Gardens that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the garden as Vrindavan. Ott Jagannát valaba kertben volt, hogy Csétanya Mahápapu ezt a kertet Vindávanának látta. Now there's someone else who used to stay in Jagannath Vallabha Gardens. Volt még valaki, aki ott szokott tartózkodni, ott lakott a Jagannát Vallabha kertben. Jennifer, there's so many names, isn't it? It's like, how can you follow all this stuff? Nagyon sok név van ebben elnézést, hát hogy lehet ezt követni? Sorry, don't worry about it, you just, no, just listen. Miattól. There was one devotee whose name was Roy Ramananda. And he's Mahaprabhu is one of Mahaprabhu's most intimate associates in the Gambira. But his place was there in Jagannath Vallabha Gardens. Now there's an ancient deity uh, in Jagannath Vallabha Gardens. That deity is from before the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's a very unusual deity. In fact, we only know of three deities similar to that in the entire world. Valójában az egész világon ehhez csak, te csak három ilyen hasonló múlti van. Unless maybe you have one here in Debrecen, and I kind of doubt it. Lehet, hogy van egy Debrecenben is, de ez e felől kétségeim vannak. That deity is Krishna, Vrindavan Bihari Krishna. Ez a múlti, ez Vrindavan Bihari Krishna. Two hands playing a flute. Két kezével fogorázik. But the deity has four hands. De négy kezű, négy karú. Two hands of Krishna playing a flute, and another hand with a conch shell, and another hand with a Sudarshan chakra. 
A negyedik kezében pedig egy szudasan csak. The deity's name is Krishna Gopa. Krishna Gopának hívják. This deity is just like Krishna in Vrindavan, but Dwarka at the same time. Ez a múlti, ez olyan, mintha Krishna lenne Vrindavanában és Dvárakában ugyanabban az időben. Now one thing that our, our Goswamis have described about Jagannath Puri, egy dolog, amit a Goswamiaink leírtak Jagannath Puriról, is that Jagannath Puri is Gupta Vrindavan. It's Brindavan, but it's not Brindavan. It's Brindavan, but not. Brindavan's in UP. A Brindavan az Uttar Pradeshben van. Ah, Jagannath Puri is in Odisha on the on the bank of the ocean. Jagannath Puri pedig a teljesen teljesen másik tájékon az óceán partján. But the 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 Purusha Bodhini Shruti of the Atharva Veda describes. De az Atharva Védának a Purusha Bodhini Shruti a Yet the Bhargavi Jamuna, Govardhan, the Ratna Samas, and the Bhimala Sadosa Chandika Sadosa Gopyaha, that the Bhargavi River, which goes around Jagannath Puri, is, is a Jamuna. And Govardhan Hill is there. Uh -huh. And the Gopis are there. Uh -huh. And Sanatana Goswami in Brihad Bhagavatamrita says the same thing. Sanatana Goswami in Brihad Bhagavatamrita says the same thing. The Jagannath Puri is Gupta Vrindavan. So our Acharyas have described, Rupa Goswami has described, on the order of Satyabhama, he wrote about this Lalita Madhav in Gupta Vrindavan, this Navar Vrindavan garden in, in Dwarka. Az ácsajaink leírják, Kupagos Szami leírja, és nem csak magától, hanem Szatyabán Mádévi utasítására, hogy ez a Nala Vindában kert, ez Gupta Vindában. Now I mentioned something that our Goswamis, they spoke about this Gupta Vrindavan, this Nava Vrindavan garden in many places in their literature. Beszéltem erről korábban, hogy a Goswamiaink Erről a Gupta Vindában, ahol erről a Nava Vindában keltől több írásukban írtak. If you study the science of literature, hogyha tanulmányozzátok az irodalom, you can uh, see an era of literature by the style of writing, by the subject matter. Egy, az irodalom történelmét akkor lehet uh, látni a, a, az, az írás stílusáról, um, about the style and the subject matters. And this topic of Nava Brindavan Garden is a unique contribution of the Goswamis given in their literatures. You don't find it anywhere else in any other literatures. Or do you? Historically speaking, according to literature, actually, we do find descriptions of this Nava Vrindavan in another genre of literature, another part of India. Valójában szerepel ez a Nava Brindában kert téma a, az irodalom történetben, de egy másfajta zsáner az, vagy is így van, tehát hogy zsáner az az, hogy írásfajta, tehát műfaj. hogy kóza vagy műfaj, ez az közik, másfajta műfajban. One of my teachers was Professor Fakir Mohan Prabhu, Sadhu from Arissa. Az egyik tanítom, um, he was a childhood friend of my Guru Maharaj. He came to see Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada came to Bhubaneswar. And Fakir Mohan Prabhu was a professor of Gaudiya Odia literature. And according to him, he told me that Prior to the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in Odia literature, there was writings about this Navar Brindavan garden in, Brinda, in Dwarka. 
És Fakim Alpagó azt mondta el nekem, hogy az irodalomtudomány, irodalomtörténet szerint az Odia irodalomban már Rupagó Szemicsétanyi Mahapagó előtt is szerepelt ez a Nava Brindában kert téma az óriai írások között. So I'm going to give away the whole dramatic conclusion of Alita Madhav. Itt most uh, kiadom a titkát az egész uh, dramati, drámai. Huge drama. Uh, Krishna leaves Vrindavan. Radharani commits Mádavan, suicide. Nagy drama, Krishna, Krishna ends up marrying Chandravali. Promises I won't marry anyone else. Radharani is at the mercy of Chandravali Rukmini. There's finally union in Navarindavan Garden. We'll speak more about that in later sessions. It's a very wonderful story. But finally what happens, Radharani is united with Krishna. And Krishna, so, and Krishna says, so Radharani, what would you like? She says, the only thing I would like, I want to be in Vrindavan. Az egyetlen dolog, amit akarok, az az, hogy Vrindavan. And I would like that you never leave Vrindavan. És azt szeretném, hogy soha nem hagynád el Vrindavan. And Krishna says, Tatastu, so be it. És Krishna azt mondja, hogy Tatastu, le így legyen. And Radharani says, how is it possible? És Radharani mondja, hogy lehet ez, hogy lehet. And then at that time, Yoga Maya Subhadra arrives. És ekkor megérkezik Yoga Maya Subhadra Devi. And she says, hey Radha, don't have any doubt. Right now, you're in Vrindavan. You never left Vrindavan. In this whole thing, Krishna leaving Vrindavan, Radharani committing suicide, Krishna marrying Chandravali, promising to only marry her, Chandravali controlling Radharani, és ez az egész nagy dráma, az, hogy Krishna elhagyta a Vindávanát, az, hogy Radharani öngyilkos lett, az, hogy Csandrával itt elvette Krishna, és hogy most Radharani Csandrával irányítása alatt van. She says, it's all a dream. Ez mind csak egy álom. It never happened. Ez sohasem történt meg. And you've been in Vrindavan the whole time. Egész végig Vindávanában voltatok. So this is Jagannath Puri. And this is Krishna's meeting with the gopis. And this is a description of our Goswamis. So it's a difficult thing to digest. <laughs> so I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to thank everybody so much. Don't be too happy. You're not, you haven't gotten rid of us yet. Ne legyetek, ne örüljetek nagyon, mert még nem szabadultatok meg tőlünk. And pretty much wherever we go, devotees have parties. Huh? Mikor elmegyünk, akkor bakták mindig buliznak. The day after we leave. Miután elmentünk. They celebrate, they're gone. Haribo. <laughs> Haribo, elmentek. So we're going to Serbia uh, next week. Jövő héten elmegyünk Szerbiába. But we'll come back uh, in, in a few days after that. For a few days, and we'll go to uh, go to Lithuania. But we'll kind of be around something. <laughs> but I wanted just to, to thank very much Prabhuji, Nitai Bhavana, and, and Ishvan who ran away. But we have Ishvan's heart here in the form of Jennifer. There's <laughs> I just want to thank everybody so much for being so kind to us. And, uh, I, and we want to share this guitar with all of you. I hope it, you didn't get a stomachache from trying to digest too much. <laughs> thank you all very much. Granta Rashimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Goprem Anandi, Vamsha Kalpadru Bishchakripa Sindhu Beva Chapatita Nam Pravani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namonama.